What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. I'm Scott Baer, and I'm here with Ashton Edmonds and Tori McElhaney. I am not at Mercedes-Benz Stadium where Ashton and Tori are. I'm on, we'll call it short-term IR, and we'll save the story for another day. But nonetheless, after one week hiatus, the Falcons Final Whistle is back, and there's no better time to be back considering the home team won a dramatic 23 to 20 results against the Cleveland Browns who came into Mercedes came into Mercedes-Benz Stadium and left with a loss. So we're going to break down what was a kind of a fun game to watch, definitely a dramatic game that once again came down to the end. Uh, so we're going to break this thing down. We're going to go over what the heck is going on with every single one of these games ending in the fourth quarter. We're going to talk about the, the, the Browns run game and the performance of the Falcons running game, especially with their young runners. We're going to talk about the Falcons defense, which came through not only in the clutch in the fourth quarter, but at several points during this game. And of course the Falcons getting their first win at home and going through the first four games at two and two. But before we break this thing down in specifics, Tori, let's get your overall impressions of this uh, victory here on Sunday against Cleveland. Yeah, I thought this win was really needed for not just, of course, record-wise getting back to 500, but for morale too. I mean, you think about where this team has been over the course of the first four weeks of the season, and we really have seen them be in every single game. They are in all of these games, and what we've seen over the course of the last two weeks is them finishing these games out and actually getting the win it's funny when you think about it and I don't want to like look back too far, but the Falcons are how many plays away? I would say less than five plays away from being four and oh right now. They're True playing, story. they're playing very well. They they look very different than what we have seen this Falcons team look like in years past. I think that's good, especially offensively. Um, but just my overall takeaway from this game is it, it kind of goes back to what Arthur Smith was saying. It was like, it was no secret that both teams wanted to run the ball. And essentially the most physical team was going to win on Sunday. And the team that ran the ball the best was going to win on Sunday. And that's exactly, I think, what we saw transpire over the course of these four quarters. Ashton, what, like, what were your biggest takeaways uh, after watching this one live? Yeah, man, I, I thought the defense did a really good job late in the stretch down in the red zone. Um, you can see, like Tori said, you can see the chemistry in Moreau. Um, amongst the defensive group, I think everybody's on one accord. And you see players like Michael Walker stepping up. You see players like Richie Grant stepping up. Um, and that everybody on defense just buys in. And I feel like, um, you know, that was kind of hurting them earlier in the season is that they didn't finish at all. Like the defense would kind of stumble in the fourth quarter or the offense would stumble in the red zone. But I see, you know, like earlier in the Browns game, when the Browns drove it, I don't know how many yards, but when they drove it, all the way down the field, we saw that the the Falcons defense closed them out when they they actually forced them to go four and out. Um, and I think the Browns were at like the two yard line. So I think, you know, we're seeing the defense step up. And I kind of talked about that in uh, one of my articles this week is that, you know, they want to carry that momentum moving forward. And, you know, the sentiment that DMPs preached at training camp, I think is truly starting to show in these games. If we go back to what uh, to what Grady Jarrett said in his press conference after the Falcons beat the Seattle Seahawks, he mentioned two words that I think applied to that game and definitely apply to this game as well. Number one is outlast. Number two is overcome because this team is not perfect, right? And these, right. these games are coming down to the end and they're making mistakes, but they are not critical loss inducing mistakes like we saw from those first two games and i think that's the most important thing outlast overcome they're finding a way to do those two things and i think that's that's the quality and the nature of a good team i also think about when you look at who's better on paper right which matters only from wednesday to friday maybe until you actually <laughs> get down and play these games um but I really think about two things that if you're, let's say, not as good on paper as the other team, two things that keep you in games are being able to control the clock or at least run the ball well and being opportunistic on defense, right? We're going to talk yeah. a lot about the defense late in the fourth quarter. How about the first drive, the very first drive where they went all the way down to the Falcons, the Browns went all the way down to the Falcons four and turned the ball over on downs. Yeah. That, that sequence goes different. We're talking about, 
a whole different thing here. And again, uh, we're, uh, we're going to get to that. Tori has uh, lots of thoughts on this defense that she was <laughs> tweeting out during this game that, and she also uh, wrote about, which I think uh, was a really good story, but nonetheless, uh, everybody, at least the three of us, we're all like a little frazzled after these games, right? Because every single time I write this instant replay the, where it needs to get published the second the clock strikes zero, zero, zero. And every time <laughs> I'm in a full scale panic, I'm going to have my dad's horseshoe hair loss, male pattern baldness thing, like before the season's over. Because <laughs> every single one of these games is intense, man. Like, why do you think that is, guys? Like, why do you think it's that, that it's coming down to the wire every single time? I mean, I think Arthur Smith kind of says it best where he's like, this is the NFL and this is kind of what, (laughs) it's kind of par for the course at this point. I mean, you look at, I mean, not just looking at the Falcons, if you look at the league overall, over the course of the first four weeks of the season, we have seen so many games come down to the wire, so many games where there is a quote unquote upset. I mean, this is not just a, a, a Falcons I guess, storyline. This is a storyline across the league. And I think it makes the league so much more fun to watch when you do have games like this that are coming down to the wire. I I think that's professional football at its best. And for the Falcons, it really is very interesting. And I go back to my first point that I made. It's like seeing progress in finishing out these games. And Scott, I know you wrote post game about how every game we have seen come down to final plays in the fourth quarter and for the Falcons to actively go in the last two weeks and be able to pull those games out. And it's really important, I think, for what this team does moving forward, because being at 500 right now is, is so, I think it's really, really good for this team at, at this point in the season. Yeah, definitely. And and given that I spent time writing that story, I have the benefit of having done some research, but I I think it, it, what we've seen early on speaks to the Falcons improvement, right? Because last year so much was made about how they did in one score games. They were seven and two, right? They finished Mm -hmm. seven and 10. So the other eight games, almost half of the season was not a one score game and they were losses by an average of dot, 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 21 points. So <laughs> yeah. they were getting blown out a lot, right? I think because of all the things that we've mentioned, all the things that we're going to talk about is that the Falcons are more competitive. And I yes. think they're going to be in more of these games. And it's funny because when you look over the schedule in April and nobody ever should write W's or L's next to each game, but you look at it and you think, oh, that could be a really difficult stretch or that could be an easy stretch. And now you go back and you look through and you think, okay, the Falcons are more competitive. There's going to be a lot of these fourth quarter finishes. So how are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. I I think like, it's really interesting because I remember, I I can't remember Scott, if, if you remember this, but you and I both like did like the schedule release analysis and it was like, what's the hardest stretch. And I'm pretty sure I said the first four games of this, season was the hardest stretch of any stretch over the course of this 2022 season and now you look at it and the Falcons are two and two and are are playing the in they're in these games they're a few plays away from this being a completely different record and I don't think I would have said that back when the schedule was released I know I didn't say that when back when the schedule was, was released so this team really is I mean, Arthur Smith said it all the time in training camp and even as the season got started, like we're out to prove something. This team has a chip on its shoulder. I think we're actively seeing that kind of come to fruition over the course of the first four weeks of the season. Yeah, yeah I went, go ahead, Ashton. No, I was just say, yeah, I think um, just to echo what Tori said, a lot of the players are saying like they're coming in with the chip, chip on their shoulder. Caleb Huntley, he said on the first play, he came in with a chip on his shoulder to help the Falcons win. And, um, you know, I think everybody's just buying in, you know, Chris Lindstrom mentioned that everybody in the huddle just had faith in each other and, you know, that they just wanted to continue that momentum um, of driving the ball downfield. And, you know, I think we see this team truly coming together. We see this team finishing. We we see this team now playing complete games. And I think, you know, that's going to carry forward, you know, later in the season. When I look at it, this upcoming stretch is at Tampa, home against San Francisco, at Cincinnati. That's uh, two NFC title contenders and one playoff team. I think 
I'm not going to write them out of any one of those games, which I think says a lot right there. And it's just because yeah. of what we've seen out of Garoppolo and out of the Bengals offensive line and out of the Falcons, I'm sorry, out of the Bucks sometimes sputtering defense or offense. Now we could get to that stretch and they could have gone 0 and 3 and they could have lost each game by 15 points, but you cannot automatically write them out of these games. And I think that because of these things that we're talking about, because of the outlast and the overcome, because of what we're going to get into next here, Ashton, is this run game, right? You look at the beginning of the game and the time of possession was uh, lopsided towards the ground, (laughs) but they found a way to run the ball. Well, Um, what did you kind of learn listening to tape of Caleb Huntley and Chris Lindstrom and some of these other guys talk um, about, about how that run game helped kind of reignite this offensive efficiency that was lost throughout the middle of this game. For sure. Yeah. Like I said, Chris Lindstrom, he mentioned that everybody in the huddle just have belief in each other. They have faith in each other. Um, And over the last two games, you know, they ran for 381 yards on 66 carries. That's been the X factor in helping the Falcons win, I feel like, over these last two games. And um, I think once the offense saw that the run game was very effective against the Browns, you know, they just kept going. They just kept calling the plays. And, um, you know, Caleb Huntley, he had that belief in in himself going into the game. You know, his name was called. um, He was elevated on Saturday. And, you know, he was just ready for the moment. And, um, you know, once he got in in the third quarter, man, we, we saw th- that impact that he made on the Falcons offense. It's interesting because after the game, Arthur Smith was talking about the performance of Caleb Huntley and the spark that he provided. And I thought it was really interesting how Arthur Smith was talking about Michael Petrie, who is the Falcons running backs coach. And he made the comment. He was like, yeah, we got into the third quarter and Michael Petrie was like, give him a couple carries. That couple carries turned into a significant drive that I thought was the drive of the entire game. Like I think when I think back to this game and a couple weeks from now, I'm going to be looking at that drive because I was very, very impressed by what we saw from Caleb Huntley and, and not just Caleb Huntley, but you talk about the run game overall. And I asked Arthur Smith after the game, you know, it was funny because he said, you know, we knew coming into this, that this was going to be a big boy fight, like talking about at the line of scrimmage and whoever was going to be the most physical, whoever was going to run the ball, the best was going to come out and win this game. And that, that held true, but something that he said, which I thought was really, I don't know. I really st- stuck on it where he said you're not creeping up on anybody people know that we want to run the football that's what fires you up it won't be that way every week we know how competitive it is but when you can run the ball when they know you're going to run it that speaks volumes about our guys and I think that's something that may go overlooked it's like the Falcons are they don't have any secrets right now they're they're Arthur Smith has said we want to run the ball we want to be the most physical team on the field that's there's that's no there's no secret in that and the fact that they were still able to go out and do that and do it in a win, I think I think he's right. I think it does speak volumes to where this team is in terms of playing with a certain type of physicality. Yeah, and I think that that physicality extends on both sides of the football because you look at what Nick Chubb is. He's one of the best running backs in the league. He yep. exerted himself and made his presence felt, especially uh, on a key fourth quarter touchdown drive. Um that put the Browns ahead, I believe. Mm-hmm. But after that, Falcons defense generates a punt and then an interception. Falcons offense goes touchdown, field goal, field goal to win the game. Um, key moments there, Tori. But I know that defensively, there was more that impressed you than, than just those final drives. Yeah, it wasn't just the final drives. And I even tweeted this post game. It's like, I know everyone's going to be talking about, you know, the Grady Jarrett sack followed by the Richie Grant, or not Richie Grant, Richie Grant was last week. (laughs) His interception was last week. This is D. Alford's interception. But it it really is that moment. I know everybody's going to be talking about it. I know. But to me, the reason why this defense is playing to the level of which it is, is because of what they're doing in the red zone. I know Ashton talked about it. Scott, you talked about it. They're coming up with stops in the red zone. And that is to me, 
more as important as any fourth quarter single play that you have. I was actually crunching the numbers a little bit. And over the course of the last two games, so in the Falcons' last two wins against the Browns and the Seahawks, they held the Browns to one for three in the red zone, and then they held the Seahawks two for five in the red zone. <laughs> like, that's total three for eight trips that opponents are going into the red zone and not coming away with touchdowns. It doesn't, at the end of the day, and I know Dean Pease has said this before, and I'm paraphrasing by saying this, but he essentially is like, I don't care how much they run it on this. I don't care how many yards they rack up on us. I care if we're keeping them out of the end zone. And that is exactly what we're seeing. Over the course of the last two weeks, Seattle and Cleveland have had over 800 yards of total offense, and yet they're not winning the game. So that, to me, shows so much progress of, of this defense locking it down inside the 20. And I, I think that's honestly one of the most impressive stats is like, you know, we talk about this whole like bend but never break mentality. I think that's kind of the marker of what this defense is in 2022 right now. That's so many yards. That's so, so many, yards. many yards in victories. <laughs> that's, that's, that's an insane number to me. Um, one that again speaks to how you perform in the clutch, whether it's on a specific drive or over the course of a game is going to put you in a position to fight for a victory. That's what we're seeing time and time again, the Falcons putting them in position to fight for a victory. Sometimes it's an early surge, right? And then they lost control against the saints. They played pretty well in the fourth quarter against the Rams, except yeah. with the interception, right? They played important when it mattered most. Um, and you, you talk about big moments, right? Uh, how about the biggest, most recognizable player on this Falcons defense? Grady Jarrett gets called for an offsides I know. earlier in that Don't drive. see that often. And then you don't comes, see that often. <laughs> no. And then comes back with a huge sack. It was a penalty, then a sack that put Jacoby, Pris, Jacoby Pris, Brissett, did I say that right? in position <laughs> to have to force a ball downfield. Exactly what Geno Smith had to do the week before big yep. time players coming up in big time moments. That was, so that's what you need from your leader. And when your leader does it, it inspires everybody else to do it too. I think all those things are really strong. And we, we, we used to do these uh, progress reports, right? Because back when there was a 16 game season, like two years ago, um, we, we'd be at the quarter pole right now. And we're essentially right. there percentage wise with an extra game. But after four games, the Falcons are sitting here at, at two and two. Look, they could, uh, as Tori mentioned, they're a couple of plays away from being four and oh, they could be a couple of plays away from being all four. If we want to, you know, that there, yeah. there are both ways to go with it. Right. But you're sitting here at two and two. And I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but I feel like every game's on the table now. Um, mm -hmm. Even going to Tampa, that's not going to be easy, but you never know. And when never you have know. that environment, like what have you learned about this Falcons team over the course of the first four games and how can it be applied to what comes next? Yeah, I Ashton, I'll let you take that. Yeah, I would say, I think from what I've noticed, the Falcons team is resilient. You know, they don't give up. Like we saw against the Rams, I was on the edge of my seat against when they played the Rams because they literally, I think they were down like 28 to three and they came back, you know, scored 27 points in, in like a quarter and a half. And I think um, that's been the biggest word for me, um, you know, regarding this Falcons team is that they've been resilient through these first four games and that they don't give up until the clock says zero, zero, zero. They play all the way through. And, um, you know, Michael Walker preached on that. Um, Rashawn Evans, the Alford, um, Chris, like every player on the team knows that, you know, everybody on this Falcons roster does not give up. Everybody on this Falcons roster kind of plays with the chip on their shoulder and they're, and they're out to prove um, that, you know, they're a great team. And we see that through the first four games. So I was talking to Lorenzo Carter in the locker room and it was he gave me the single best quote that I feel like I've gotten out of anybody over the course of the first four games. And I, I'm going to read it, but I, I preface it by saying that I feel like it's a quote that almost verbatim, word for word, represents how this Atlanta Falcons team feels about itself right now, four games into the season. I'm going to read it. It said, we got some dogs, <laughs> first off. We're deep. It's a team, first of all. 
We don't have big superstars or guys who everybody is looking at, but when it comes down to it, everybody is going to fight. And that's what I love. And that to me, if someone wants to like put that on a graphic or whatever, like, and hang it up somewhere like that to me is what this 2022 Falcons team is and how they view themselves. That is, it's like, even though, yeah, you have, Kyle Pitts and you have Drake London, who I know a lot of people talk about, but, and, and now Cordero Patterson, a lot of people talking about him, but you think about some of the big quote unquote superstars of the league. Like that's not something that the Falcons currently have right now, but it is a team that is pieced together with guys on one year deals and a lot of young talent. That's kind of just raw. Like we see Arnold Ebiketti go out there and I think he had a great game. One, a game that went overlooked. Um, but you, you think about some of these players and it's like, they're trying to make a name for themselves. So I loved that quote from Lorenzo Carter, because it's like, this is how this team feels about itself. And I think you have seen that over the course of the first four games sitting at 500. Yeah. And, and, and I think that they have a chance to continue to climb and get better throughout this season, despite all of the situations that they have they have a ton of i won't get too into detail but they have a ton of dead gaps dead salary cap space that they could be spending on talent but instead they have a roster construction as tory outlined but they're still finding ways to be competitive i think that speaks a lot to coaching i think that speaks a lot to team culture and i think it speaks a lot to how they're going about their business again they're running well they're being opportunistic they're staying in the fight you know arthur smith said it so many times last year we keep swinging that's not a lie they keep swinging. And I think that that's a positive and that's some, that's a trait that I believe will extend you know, to any opponent that they have this season, even if they're overmatched and they're going to be overmatched at times, period, right. full stop. And I also want to get in here that while Marcus Mariota's quarterback play has been quality at times, there are still too many mistakes here that are, that are le- at some point, this is a quarterback league. At some point, the quarterback is going to have yep. to go win you a game with 90 seconds left and 50 70 yards to go and that's going to have to be a new way that they find a way to win that will have to be an element of what they do if they're going to reach their goals which are loftier than everybody else's as it should be um but i tell you what the season is fun right yeah i'm having so much fun it's it's fun i was in a press box like i was in a press box literally on the edge of my seat next to tori um amanda she had like her hands over her head i was like are you okay but (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's a very exciting season, and I think um, the fans are loving it. We saw it today. The fans are loving it. So I will yeah. say this, too. And, I mean, I've covered this team for – this is my third season covering the Falcons. And I will say this. Even in the the woes and even in the moments that, does, that it, it is kind of nerve-wracking, this offense is playing in a way that is more balanced, more explosive, more fun for me to watch than I think I have seen an offense perform since I've been covering this team. And that I feel like that's saying a lot. Yeah. And and I think that there's a lot, this team is entertaining. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. And I hope that the fan base goes along for the ride. I I was, uh, again, I'm not at the stadium. So I was reading YouTube comments while Arthur Smith's, um, press conference was going on and uh, so many people said last year so many times it felt like a wasted Sunday right every Um, game has people on the edge of their seats Um, I think that's important another thing that's important is that we have a slight change in where these podcasts are going if you are a faithful Falcons final whistle subscriber that's awesome and thank you but do us all a solid and subscribe rate and review to a new channel called the Falcons Podcast Network. That that features the Falcons Final Whistle, the Falcons In Focus Podcast, which is essentially brand new, um, and the Falcons Audible with our buddies, Derek, DJ, and Dave. So anyway, rate, review, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, It was another fun day at the office for the Falcons, and they have a big one coming up against Tampa. Should be fun. We'll talk to you after that one next week. 